Warning, the following content contains sounds. It has been shown that some sapiens of the Homo have episodic memory towards some sounds. Therefore, forming a bad reaction to certain sounds. Nevertheless, the sounds we use are only to mock actions and notions, which are, of course, ridiculous. We are not mocking the people who have them. No, no, no. Because you know in time, you may change what you do and change what you think. Having said that, this is a correlation sensation. A show where I talk about your mother's mammalian protuberances. Yes, yes. They come in all sorts of shapes, colors and textures and smells. But of course, we will proceed to something more important. What's so funny? Void, can you pick up that gong again? Why? Can you just directly spray the alcohol all over it so it's dripping? Yes, why? Well, I just want to make... No, no, like the whole thing. Okay. Well, like I'm... from a distance away, you know? So you get a go, oh, yeah. Now the other side, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's dripping. That's good. Oh, I just wanted to make sure... Saves. Because uh, I felt like vinegary. Well, that's probably what's in the cleaning product. It's alcohol. Yeah, no. Don't drink it. It'll be bad for you. Drinking rubbing alcohol can make you go blind. It's ethyl alcohol. Oh, ethyl. I don't think that's good either way. It smells like vodka. Vodka will work too. Yeah, not as good as... 70% 70% or higher. You know what the Russian mob used to do when they would deal with crowds or people pissed off at them? They'd take a sip of vodka and spit it in their face. Oh, I thought they'd just hire some spies and, uh, you know, offer people secretly. No, no, that this is like in front of them in the moment. Like, you know, like a pissed off patron. Like, uh, you're in my way, move your van. Okay. Sip of vodka, spit all in their face. Like, okay, now it's not a problem. You have vodka in your face, so now it doesn't matter because you have vodka in your face. I don't think that's how they sound, Void. Oh, okay. I think they sound more like, you have vodka in your face. How can you not say that without raising your eyebrows? Do you have to uh, narrate everything I do? No, it's just you had a weird look in your eyes. Weird. Well, the swelling has gone down since COVID. Well, that, that's know, been months ago. They're not having googly. What? You know, my eyes haven't been googly. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have been rolling around in your head opposite directions like titties. Yeah. I was looking at it when I saw my TikTok videos, and I was like, oh, fuck. It was like, look at my eyes just jiggle around like a pair of old 80-year-old tits. Yes. Great. They're going to have the uh, the old folks home only fans. Void. What? You know how jealous you get of them being on the camera. Why is that? You don't want anybody else oogling your mamas. I'm going to just uh, redact it. No comment. You can't redact that. Just watch me. What, you gonna put a little black smudge on it? No, I'm saying my own comment. I have no comment on that. Well, you didn't even put a comment out there. I don't know, I'm just saying smart things. Don't do that. Okay. Well, I mean, please learn how to use them right, I mean. Okay, so no comment was correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Or you could say I do not recall, or I, I plead the fifth. Exactly. That I quote those, yes. Yeah, quotation marks. Thank you so much, Void, for cleaning my gong. You're welcome. Is it a gong be gone? What? Nothing. I made a stupid pun. Oh, okay. Whatever you say. Okay. So, we can start off the podcast in a good way. Oh, you're getting to sleepy. Unless if you're driving a car. Whoa. Two and ten. Two and ten. What is two and ten? Well, you put your hands on the steering wheel. Oh. If you're taking a bath. Do not sleep either. Yes, that would be very dangerous. Unless you're a porpoise, then you're fine. And then if you're up on a ladder, don't be listening to this podcast at all, because it will make you fall. <laughs> that happened to uh, my father, not your father. Not you, I mean. I'm glad you didn't think that I was my own father. That no. would be kind of impossible. No, no, but uh, Father Figure was painting house and fell, caught his leg, and uh, was maybe a foot off the ground and just had to fall. He was okay. But then one time he fell and broke both of his heels. Don't tell me they got fused. Yep. What? That's why he walks like that? Yep. Walk like a robot. Exactly. Oh, he has bolts in his feet. They asked, do you want him out? He's like, no, that'll just make it worse. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what he does with those. Yeah, it's funny. He was afraid he would stop the metal detector, but he has to tell him he just does, in case. He did kickboxing every Saturday night. I see him there. More like swinging broken limbs. I just see it turn into a turkey leg and go shatter. Yeah. They had to reform his heels. Yeah, like, he got a... With the goo ball. And then have it grow back. No, I'm serious. That's literally what they did. Imagine if your balls were goo, Void. No, no. I'm literally saying a ball of goo. I know you're literally saying it because you're saying it. A ball of goo. Yes. Yeah. What if you had the balls of goo? Well, they would stick to my leg even more in 90 degree weather. Very good imagination there, Void. Yes. Or the car seat or a hot couch. Okay. Or the newspaper when I played with them with Silly Putty. Could it not be, you know, at least three of those? What? You know, it could be stuck to the newspaper, your leg, and the couch at the same time. Well, it depends if I was rolling around on the couch with newspaper or not. Do you do that often? No. It's either only two. Either I'm naked on the couch or uh, reading the newspaper naked. That's why there's all the smudges on that couch. Of course. Well, you, you feel free to use the alcohol on your couch now. It's you, uh, it's actually wear and tear, I believe, not yeah, actual. That is wear and tear of your streaks on the couch. Oh, screw you! No, it's actually literal, actual wear and tear of wearing, like actual wear spots, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the couch was wearing you. Yeah. Maybe this alcohol won't be strong enough for you. I don't know. We do Maybe have to... I should go get some Vesvin. What the hell is that? Well, I'll tell you what. It's a <laughs> sporicide. Just don't get it in gas. Get liquid Vesvin. Whatever you do, don't use gas Vesvin. Because I used it on purple a couple weeks ago. And uh, he disappeared. Don't know where he is. His body nowhere to be found for it. Oh. I used Vesvian because I wanted to make sure he was knocked out. Oh, great. And I heard him coughing. Mm-hmm. And then I heard a loud thud. And then uh, I said, oh, that took care of my problem. He was rummaging around there. He was looking for a key or some paper clip to try to open up the hatch. Fun. Yeah. I got to tell you what, Void. What? I hope he does not want to come back. Okay. Because when I gave him that potion, uh huh, I said that it was from you. Oh, thank you for uh, making me an accomplice. Oh, says the man who likes to drive the ship around. 
Now I'm speaking like one of them humans. Well, drive. aren't we supposed to? Drive. I've, you fly it. You don't even fly it. You just tell it the coordinates and it just goes. You're the beep booper. You're, you're the screen pusher. That's very redactive. Yeah? Yeah. Do you even know what that means? Oversimplification. Redacted? No. Redactive? Yes, I think so. Redactive sounds a lot like redactive. Redactive sounds like you just blocking shit out. I can't remember. Maybe I'm not saying the word correctly. Maybe. I don't know. Reductive. Reductive. There we oh, go. Oh. That was the word. Reductive. Yes. Anyway, boy. Yes. We're going to cover one a great sapien of the homo. Who's that? Gabriel Fallopio. Fallopio? Yeah. Episode 78. All presenting right. the biography of none other than Gabriel Fallopio. This is really good. Because I was told this is Pride Month. Oh, okay. Yeah. This guy found some good shit. Oh, okay. Then all the women and all the social justice warriors will love at this dude. Okay. A lot. Okay. Except for what he did. Oh. Except, except what he found. What? Oh, I can't tell you. I'll make them listen all the way through just to find out what it is. Okay. I mean, I'm sure they don't have the Googles in front of them, too. Shh. Most people don't even bother looking at their phone that's in their hand to look something up. Kind of like you, Void. What are you talking about? Oh, I know you. I see you. When you get on your phone, you start clickety-clacking, and then I'll ask you something, and you'll be like, I don't know. Meanwhile, you have the screen in your hand, and you could be like, well, I know. I got phone. Phone. I can use phone. Now. Yeah, I'm just saying. Okay. It's constructive criticism. Yes. Not all the time. Some of the time. Some of the time. And sometimes I do that too. Yes. Not. Let's talk about his life. So, there is a place today, Void. Known for its balsamic vinegar. Mm -hmm. Opera. And being home to the sapien of the homo who is believed to have started designing the Ferrari. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's a Italy? Void. What? Whenever I say a person is born somewhere or there's a special place, don't I usually say a town or a city uh -huh. or a district? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, it, yeah, yeah, Italy is correct. I'm sorry. I just got, I got flabbergasted. Oh, semantics. I, gotcha. I had a lot of... What town is it? Wait, wait a second here. Okay. It's about... 70.75 miles to the power of two. This place is located in north central Italy. Named. Can you give me a drum roll, Void? Modena. Modena? Modena. Okay, you can suck. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Sorry, listeners' ears. Modena. Madonna. Yeah, we'll just call it Madonna. Madonna is special for us people, Void. Not because of its deep and wide history being some sort of safe haven for the Jews since being ejected from Bologna, or Bologna, in 1569. Good year, by the way, Void. What's that? Every century, this is a real good year, and it's, it's 69. Fun. Yeah. And this place is not even that special just because... It was around during Hannibal's invasion of Italy before Common Era. But because in the year 1523, Gabriel Fallopio was squoozed out from his Amalur's doorway to life. Oh. I'm pretty sure you saw that one coming. Yes. It's kind of like in that part of uh, Monty Python. Uh-huh. Where, in the search of the Holy Grail. Uh-huh. Where that... Uh, Night is running up, 
Mm-hmm. And the two guards are staring at him. And they got the drum going. And then it goes back to the guards. And then it goes back to him. And it's the same exact spot where he started off in the last clip. Yeah. They did that like six times. You know, like, <sighs> what the fuck did they do? They did a lot of drugs making those movies. They did? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Which ones? All of them. All of them? Yes. How about Badooki? What the hell is that? It's where you sniff butt dick and pussy. I mean, I don't know. But How the- about Jankum? Ew, that's just disgusting. Do you think they were inhaling that? No, I don't. You sure? I don't think so. You said all drugs. I think fermented shit definitely has a gas that will get you fucked up. I think it might kill you. I think that. Yeah? I, I don't know. You want to experiment? No, no, we no. Can, we can go get an unsuspecting victim. Where do you want to go? Uh, let's not talk about this. It's... We can go to Canada. No. Snatch up one of those bodies? No. No? How about Hawaii? No. Come on, I want to lay ya. Or we could go to Madonna. I mean, Modina. Modona? Madonnas. Modonuts. No, Madonna. That's fine. You're going to say it all different ways so they won't know what to be pissed off about. I'm going to get pissed off about that. That's their own fault. Anyways, the names of the parents to Gabriel Fallopio remains elusive to me. But I read that his father was a noble man. Probably on some slaves' void. I have read that Gabriel Fallopio began to study literature, philology, and the philosophy prior to being sent to the priesthood because his father had died and his father's wealth was no longer spent on this human. Oh, so he got basically not denounced, but uh, just cut out or what? I don't know. The money obviously didn't go to the mommy. Bastards. He faked his own death and was like, here, this is to my new brother and son said, it. No, it's kidding. That sounds ridiculous. I know. That's why I said it. Oh, uh, I think I'm beginning to understand you more, boy. What do you mean? Because sometimes you say things just to be ridiculous. Well, that was a laughing just joke. Like Ozzy Osbourne. I knew that wasn't a real name. That's a real name. No, you can't fool me, Void. I mean, he is on Did a you crazy. Just rip ass. I gotta go take a shit. Ah, I think you already did take a shit. No, no. I oh, gotta... that's so gross. I you gotta go. go. Yeah, yeah. I gotta go. Now I can see why that couch looks like that. Oh, screw you! I was about to tell you. He's still talking. Hobbling away, talking like, like I want to hear his shit. The following audio may be abrasive to some people who don't like chewing. Skip ahead for about one minute. Uh, No, these are good. Um, plantains with chili on them, fried, and coconut oil. Oh, here's another mouthful. Boom. Okay, I had to cut it off because, uh, yeah, you were, like, taking two hours in there. No, it wasn't. It was only a couple of minutes. Lies. It was literally three minutes. So, Void, we got a new tribe member. Oh. We're going to have to figure out more positions we got to fill in our tribe because we have enough to deal with on that squirrel hunter. Maybe it's squirrel trapper. Well, I don't know. We're going to wait. Okay? Okay. We got what do you think is a priority in our tribe?
I don't know. I'm still confused. Well, yeah? Yeah. They have camps for that. You're going to quote a 20-year-old South Park joke? Now you're just quoting a tweet from three or four weeks ago. Oh. That's what they said to me when I said that sexual harassment panda thing. Yes. I said, oh, it's not that old. It's only 20 years old. They're acting like it's fucking 2,000 years old. Oh, like I'm quoting Hippocrates or something. Well, that's a less known one. Hippocrates? No, the sexual harassment panda. How was that less known? That was a great episode. No, I know. Okay. So anyways, so I was actually looking at the reviews, and we have a few reviews. It doesn't let me. I can't find a way to get to the four-star review. Bastards. But we got a bunch of fives. One, two, three, four. We have four five-star reviews. (laughs) Thank you, listeners. Thank you, whoever you are. Like this one. I don't know their name. It's uh, one Calix Cali says, wow, it's a very entertaining, educational, funny, and absurd. I was in shock because I've never heard anything like this before. <laughs> Boy, it's a good thing, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, another one from Bumsley, 152515. Silly yet edu- educational lish. What? Nonsensical. In educational, makes this show enjoyable. If it's actually true history, I don't know, but I like it. Okay, nonsensical. You don't even use proper grammar. Wow, you gave us a five-star review. I revoked that angry thing. Just a little upset someone said I was nonsensical. How dare they, Void? Void? How sensical of you. Yeah. I'm sensical. I got sensicals dripping for miles. Yeah. Yeah, this is true history. And I'm glad I make you laugh. Hope you're not laughing at me. No, they're laughing with us. When do I laugh? Except for when I cackle maliciously. No, when we make joke. Ah. Okay. When we make joke. Okay, whatever. Yes. Anywho. Then we have Bella Blue Bella. Bella Blue Bella. That name is uh, confusing. This one says, adore it. Crazy, insane, but educational. Not for the faint of heart. No, you got that right. Void almost made me go pass out from his flashlets. I but took you, care of it. That's good. That's good. I don't smell anything. That's, that's all I care about. Okay, yeah, I, I sprayed some uh, cologne around. If you were a diaper that was sealed and I couldn't smell the flatulence or the shit, I don't care if you fill that thing up to kingdom come. I am 100% body, uh, potty trained, so that's no diapers here. Oh, okay. I have full control of my you balls. Know, I saw Purple took it when he got out. What? Yeah, I remember your diapers. I never had any diapers. Okay. Once upon a time, me and Purple were talking about your diaper. I never had a diaper. Void. What? Your mom has a drawer of your diaper still. Okay, but that was, that's when I was a baby. They don't put the pens on babies. You weren't that big. I was a pretty big baby. Well, really? You had a waist that was 48. I, my waist isn't even that now. Yeah, but when you were younger, you had a bigger waist. Your poor mother, right? No. I wasn't thinking that at all. Okay. And then we got this new one. The name is Jazzy X Fresh. Okay. Okay. This one says, you know, crazy, fun to listen to, educational, unlike anything else. That's nice. They even added an exclamation point. It's a good one. So we got to find a position. Point. What? Is it we're in dire need to find a job for this one. What do you think this one do? Nut sorter? Nut sorter? I don't know. So we have the squirrel hunter who uses the nuts. Then we got someone who's gathering the nuts. Mm-hmm. Your mom, mine's my love. 
She gathers the nuts. Then we have someone who picks the nuts. Uh huh. So someone picked the nuts. Someone gathered the nut, and uh, someone is uh, commanding the nuts to go. Mm hmm. And then we have someone rubbing the nuts to make sure they're perfectly nice for these squirrels. Mm hmm. Oh, we need someone to set up traps. Okay, nut trapper. Oh, nut trapper. That's a good one, Void. Uh huh. Okay, Jasmine, you are the nut trapper. Okay. That's a good one, Void. Okay. I'm very proud of you. Okay. Look, he's blushing. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just laughing. That's a very quiet laugh. Are you like a mouse? You know we can't hear her laughs from our human sensor. What? We can't hear mice laugh when they get tickled because of their ultrasonic sound that they emit when they laugh. Oh, but it's so high-pitched? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's kind of crazy. So a mouse could be laughing now and we wouldn't know it. Let's go back. Okay, to topic? Yeah, back to the topic at hand. Fallopian. Fallopio. Fallopio. Don't let this be just like Gian Batista. What? John Batista. Bye. Like, jam, jam, I got it. Yeah, 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 jam it. So, off to the loony bin for Gabriel Fallopio. Uh, working or dragged off? Oh, because he, he went to the priesthood. Oh, okay. Fortunately, Gabriel was helped out by his uncle, so it helped him avoid from becoming a human popsicle for the rest of his days. Oh, well, that's good. Yes, this allowed Gabriel to study medicine in Madonna. So I swore and claimed that since Gabriel had some incurable appetite for texts from both Galen and from some other human named Berengario de Carpi, Gabriel became thoroughly knowledgeable of surgery, anatomy, and pharmacology. With this knowledge, Gabriel Fallopio used it for the most beneficial thing one could use knowledge for. What's that? He dissected, executed sapiens of the homo who were found guilty of a crime during that time. Much, Once, what? Uh, much like other people from the, uh, from the uh, practices of medicine and the brain. Ah, anatomist, uh, you know, if you didn't know any better, you'd think they were serial killers. Yeah, true crime gang got nothing on this shit. Yes. These guys have dissected and vivisected the many people. Yeah, history is the greatest murder, er, because time kills everybody. You want to bang the gong for that one? Uh, could you bang it for me? Where did it go? I didn't touch it. It's all you. It's not me. Where'd the gong go, Void? I don't know. Are you sitting on it? Really? I never Oh, uh, yeah. If, you know that expression when they say... If it was up your ass, you'd know where it was. But not you, Gork, because your ass is gaping. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, he's a bang thing. Okay, gong for void. Oh, god damn it. Let's have alignment. Gong for void. Gong for void. Good joke, buddy. You're welcome. So anyways... Once 1540 came around all over the place like a spinning sprinkler head, spraying its 1540 seed everywhere, just loads all over in a 360 degree, whatever that is, a ray of a 1540 madness. I mean, once 1540 came around, Gabriel Fallopio went to a place called the Ferrera because the University of Pisa was there. He studied underneath some ape man named Gian Battista Canano and Antonio Brasavola. Around eight years had passed for it. Wow, that's a lot of time to dedicate to uh, his practice. Yeah. Yeah. He was studying. He, was, he wasn't, well, I guess you could say. He was getting ready to practice. Oh, okay. He was practicing, practicing. Exactly. Yes. And Gabriel was of the age of... 25 Earth Revolutions. This was the year of 1548. 
where he became the head of peace at university for both anatomy and surgery. Mm-hmm. This was said to have been given to him by none other than the one named Casimo de Medici. Whoa. Sounds so official. He, he was the Duke of Florence, boy. Oh, wow. We touched base on this uh, family, the Medici family, in Leonardo da Vinci's episodes. Those were nice, right? Yes. Yeah, most famous person we ever covered. Everybody wants to talk about Leonardo. But does anybody care about Gian Battista de la Porta or Gabriel Fallopio? I do. Do you? Yes. I wasn't talking to you. I was asking the listener. Oh, okay. Sorry, rhetorical question. Everybody knows exactly why Gabriel Fallopio is known at all. Because of his damn name. Anywho, I got a little... I, I You know, my back has been bothering me. I'm kind of angry right now. Oh, sorry. So I, I understand the feeling. on my back. Oh. Just crying at it. I have back pain and leg pain, too. Well, at least you don't have butt pain. Yeah, I relieved that earlier. Yeah, was it a compaction? No, just the normal. You sure it wasn't lingering in there longer than it normally does? No, I just had to go. You smelt the, smelt the fart when I had to go, so I had to go. Anyways, this web of history seems to be showing itself even more void. Around this time, Andres Vesalius was in Padua, which is where Gabriel was placed after he became the head of Pisa. That's nice. During this time, the Madonna born ape started reading from Andres Vesalius' anatomy books, which formed many waves void. Remember that? Oh, yes, in the community. Yeah. It must have formed a lot of waves in him, too, because Andres Vesalius was... Well known for basically dismantling a lot of ideas that Galen had published for academia for hundreds of years. Hmm. It was like, uh, it was like, uh... A big fat lie that everybody swallowed up like it was God's words. No, it's like a, di- uh, a, uh, a rena- or a, uh... A raping of the brain. No, 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 that's not true. Leaving everybody mentally incapable to understand what's really going on because they were brainwashed in school. Oh, yes. More like uh, a uh, ancient Italian diss track. Ancient Italian diss track. Yes. Like, you know, rap battles, but like, like they insult each other because basically he said, your stuff ain't worth shit, it's stupid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say that. Andrew Susalius was like, Dear Mr. Galen, your shit does stink. You put the hearts of apes and humans you didn't even blink. And people staring at the corpses just right now are completely oblivious to how you lied somehow. I think we're going into some other territory because there is a famous YouTube of you of a... I don't give a hoot. Okay. Was I copywritten too, Void? No, just uh, taking ideas. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we have Andrus Vesalius episodes on here, too, if you like us. Yes. He was pretty good. Not only did Gabriel at least read literature on anatomy, he began to perform vivisections on humans, on humans convicted for a crime punishable by cruel and unusual punishment, though it was not that unusual at the time. Was it normally beheadings and drownings, or what was it? He was vivisecting people. No, no, no. I mean, how they, how were they executed? I'm asking. By viva section, Boyd. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they got to cut people open and experiment on them. Okay, were they knocked out beforehand? Well, people were uh, at a gasp at the World War II, but in this time, this is what people would view as a fun. Old. And in the future, people are going to see boxing and UFC and the football just the same way as we see hanging today. Oh, wow. They'd be like, whoa, they let these two people just bash their brains in to get chronic traumatic encephalopathy? Oh, one of the crazy things, I remember hearing a story about one of the last beheadings in France, and it was had modern-day pictures of it, but it was like that, and then they said this was too immoral to have public executions anymore. It was a guillotine, actually. They started actually beating the body in the head. Oh, yeah? They thought that was bad? Yeah. I, I was put inside of a guillotine not too long ago at the Renaissance Festival. I know, but it wasn't actually sharp. What? 
I wouldn't get to know because I used my disappear tron. Oh. Okay, don't don't tell the listeners that. What? You know, I had to do something. They were going to chop my head off. I don't think they would have. That little 12-year-old looks serious. Well, why would a 12-year-old use a guillotine? He was calling me Gandalf the Grey, too. Wow. That little mother... I tell that mother... What? Dr. Dobbin. Okay, okay. Why you bring this shit up? Sorry, didn't mean to be bring up bad memories. Yeah, yeah. So, Gabriel Fallopian tube face did the vivisections for about three Earth revolutions while in Padua. On the lighter side, Gabriel studied the magic of plants for medicine using Islamic, Greek, and Latin recipes, which were all influenced by the Ayurvedic system of Hindu medicine, which is another episode that we've done. Or yes. Several. Yes. Yeah. Following the three-year mutilation of living humans, many, I assume, would have been sent for breaking laws that no longer exist today or were actually innocent of the accusations. In 1551, it came around, and the Senate of Venice made Gabriel well endowed with a professorship of a botany, anatomy, and a surgery at the University of Padua. This is the guy that filled in Andrus Vesalius' chair as head, Boyd, after Andrus left in frustration when his anatomy book was published and not well received by some of his peers, and one of which I would imagine to be Gabriel Tubaface. Oh. You understand why I call him Tubaface right now? Why? Well, in a little bit, I mean. Why I call him Tubaface in a little bit. No, I think I know because the name pretty much gives it away. While as chair, fallopian tubes practice as a physician as well, treating many individuals of high social prominence, including the poopy pope poop's brother. Unfortunately for fallopian tubeness, in a fifteen fifty six. Was that Machiavelli or no? Who was that? I don't know. I didn't look him up. Okay. Hmm. Well, that might have been a good idea. I found it, Void. Okay, go. I mean, wait, that, that was correct. So, Gabriel Fallopio treated none other than Baldovino de Monte, who was the poopy boop brother. Okay. Unfortunately for the Fallopio tubeness, in 1556, he is said to have fallen with fatigue, only to have later developed a chronic lung disease. Oh, that sucks. Although I have a feeling that the fatigue was a symptom of the lung disease, which wasn't showing more symptoms to have the individuals conclude that it was a lung disease until later, by the looks of the situation and what to, and what occurs next, I feel that this is the fire that was uh, put underneath his uh, butt cheeks. For Gabriel began to work on his book titled Observations Anatomies in 1557. If you recall from the Andrus Vesalius section, Vesalius spoke about the importance of observa- importance of observation, which would be like the epic rap battle cow. Yes, I am nodding my head in agreement. So much so that Andrus Vesalius said, quote, I am not accustomed to say anything with a certainty after only one or two observations. Remember that one? Yes. I do, I remember it. It's uh, beautiful. Based off the title alone of Gabriel's book, I have no doubt Andrus Vesalius influenced Gabriel. That in the fact that they both were part of the same university at the same time. Even if they hadn't agreed upon much, the people around you in life will influence your behaviors, whether if you do it in spite or in agreement with their communication. Approximately, Four Earth revolutions occurred prior to the publication of the book, Observations Anotomies. In 1561, in Venice, Gabriel's work was published. Rather than dedicating the book to Andrus Vesalius, Gabriel dedicated his work to the one male sapien of the homonym Petrus Mana, who was the physician to the Duke of Milano, named Francesco 
Sforza. Another family name from the Leonardo da Vinci biography section. The families go back many eras. Unlike many books published for anatomy during its time, this one had no illustrations, Void. Even though it was aesthetically unappealing, it's related that this book contained numerous discoveries and the descriptions of various body parts. On top of the discoveries, it pointed out mistakes in Andrus Vesalius' book, De Humani Corporeus Fabrica. Oh, how the uh, world spins around, Void. Yes, I'm kind of shocked he didn't have illustrations. Want to back up his uh, findings even more? Yeah, I would uh, imagine so, but uh, general consensus in the academic world is uh, that uh, they were actual mistakes that Andrew Fisalis had made. As one could expect, when a human who has uh, been written off by so many peers, any correction in later documents will be salt in the wound of that person if they had not healed from being ostracized. Yes. Vesalius is said to have written a letter to Cable of Fallopian Tubes. He uh, devalued the corrections made by Gabriel, rather than interest in having Gabriel show it to him. Like any human who thinks they know what they are communicating to be true, Gabriel heeded no words of Andrew's Vesalius. Woo. Here is a list of some of Gabriel's findings. We have number one. Tuba uterine. Whoa, you know what that is? The fallopian tube. Yeah, buddy. Although the tuba uterine is said to have been described by Herophilus Galen in Rufus and Ephesus. Oh, but not Andrus Vesalius. Fallopio is the first to nail the tuba on the head uterine. I feel like... Oh, uh, they didn't know it was for egg transporting? I don't think... I'm not going to go into those details until next episode. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's what my source said. Okay. Even though Gabriel called this the tuba uterine... Multiple sources have indicated he called it the trumpets to the uterus. So I don't know how tuba translates to trumpets, but whatever. I've seen them both. They look different. Yes. You know, I was actually staring at it, trying to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. And it don't make much sense unless it was a curved trumpet. But then I was thinking maybe saxophone would have been better. Then I realized that the saxophone wasn't invented until by 1900s mm-hmm. for jazz. So fallopian head would have no idea what saxophone was. Oh, and there was a straight trumpet where you just blew, and it was a small really hole and a big hole. Yeah. It, it was more of a uh, heralding kind of thing. Yeah, where they usually have flags on it or the yeah, other yeah. people hold it up. Yes. Oh, have you seen the trumpets from, like, ancient China? They're uh, collapsible. Oh, wow. They're really long, like 10, 15 feet long. Oh, wow. Real big. Anyways, we're going to go on to two. Okay. The fallopian hiatus. Whoa. (laughs) Is that when your fallopian tubes takes a hiatus, goes on vacation? Says, ah, I'll see you next year. I bet some women wish they would because of menstruation is kind of sometimes terrible for them, depending on body, genetics, hormonals, and also stressors. Yeah. Anyways, the fallopian hiatus is actually the point of entry for the superficialis nerve. Oh, okay. So that's probably the nerve that gives them pain when they are experiencing the... uh, Yeah, anyways, we're going to deeper detail over this next week. Oh, sorry, I keep on ruining the surprise. Oh, there's no surprise you're ruining. You don't know. You don't know what I'm going to say. Sorry. I could say. It has nothing to do with anything. Back to topic. Okay. Number three. The sphenoid and temporal bones in detail. Number four. The corda timpani. Whoa, he got the trumpets and the timpanis. The whole damn orchestra. There's more than just the trumpets and the timpanis. Oh, that was you that said saxophone and tuba. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was, yeah because 
<laughs> that one, that actually looks like, uh, you know, a fallopian tube a little bit. And guess what? That's like one of the sexiest parts of the body. <laughs> Not really. I mean, maybe that area, but uh, you can't really quite see it in person unless you look inside. <laughs> well, I don't even... Th- have I, you not been using our glasses? Uh, well, the thing is you have to look past the cervix to into, into the uterus. You know there are different levels at which you can use the radiation to peer through humans. Whatever you do on the weekends, man, don't, don't, don't tell me. Yeah, I don't have to. Your mom tells you. You disgusting. I hate you guys on the phone. I don't know why she has to go through in such detail. You know your mom. She loves you. She wants to make sure you're not left out of the loop. Ah, that's a loop I want to be left out of. What? You grow out of it now? You're in your 30s. Mid-30s. Yes. Well, ow. Why? Why? Are you just upset and you're doing this out of spy void? No, I just don't want to hear about my mother's parts. That's Not all. Not anymore? No. Oh, sexually aggravating. No, I get plenty of action. I'm just saying that it's your mom. Not ma- your mom. It's not the same as mommy's. No, mommy's not uh, not anything <laughs> for me. Nothing. It's just I don't have an Oedipus complex or a complex at all. Whatever. Then where was I? The lacrimal bone? Yeah. Then there's the lacrimal bone. And then the lacrimal canal. The circulation of the carotid and vertebral arteries. The circle of Willis was called the Willis's polygon. Gabriel, fallopian head, discovered it nearly a hundred years prior to Thomas Willis. Gabriel, fallopian face, coined the terms vagina, placenta, cricoid, and tympanum for various body parts. Ooh. He described the ossification process of the occipital bone. In the, the sternum, he described the tooth development process because he cut open feti, infants, children, and adults, both alive and dead. Uh, what a nice guy, huh? Yeah. He also described the inner ear parts, including the oval windows, the semicircular canals, the cochlea, and the scala vestibuli. And the, the Tim Panica cavity. <laughs> yeah, baby. Would it go more into that, huh? Yep. I'm not even going to touch the book. Oh. Okay. Unless if you want me to. You think I should? Maybe I should just go into more details of the book. What book? Obver- observations and Anatomize. That was literally a joke. I was messing with you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Ah, I couldn't tell because usually you go, what book? What name? Who? All right, that's a good one. All right, uh, you fucked with me. You got me. You got me. So, when it came to medicine, Gabriel Fallopio also figured out characteristics which distinguish the differences between syphilitic condyloma, no, condyloma lata, and condylama acuminata. He treated syphilis with mercury. <laughs> that, that oh, that's a bad turn out idea. Well. You might as well put some lead in there too, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you uh, couldn't even tell what what was causing the brain damage. The syphilis or the mercury. Anyways, he also used the sap from the guaiac tree. That's like the second or third time we've talked about the guaiac tree sap. With this extensive work on syphilis, it only makes sense that Gabriel designed the state of the art. Condom made out of linen and a little pink ribbon to tie it to the base of the cock. I mean, penis. Source 1 indicates that Gabriel is the first to claim the usefulness of condoms against transmission of disease. He tested condoms on 1,100 men, boy. That's a lot of dudes to sleep with. Well, I think he said, here, go do this and go have sex with it. Yeah, did he tell him to go have sex with that whore? Go, she has syphilis. Maybe he didn't tell him. He said, here, I bought you this whore. Don't tell him you're sick. 
I don't know. You know, sometimes people can have like almost no symptoms at all from syphilis. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a very bad idea. He yep. did not follow the Hippocratic Oath. Yep. Very dangerous. Yeah. Claims were made that none of the men contracted syphilis, though. So, <laughs> I'm starting to think, though, too. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm starting to think, though, as well, that maybe the TB was a cover-up for the real story, boy. What's that? Syphilis. And Gabriel. Perhaps he had the disease and was trying to, you know, sex these dudes with a linen condom. He claimed that these, <laughs> these condoms were the jizz knees. That's just bizarre. And I'm going to get down to the bottom of this void. Okay. I'm going to go to the tippy tippy top. I ain't going to stop. I can say a lot of things right here, but I'm not going to. Why not? This is a podcast. You have a microphone. No, no, jokes, jokes about the tippy-top dabber of the condom where they uh, shoot the load in. There you go. That was good. That yeah. was good. Yes. Now I understand jokes. Okay. That was a joke. That yes. was a good one. So popular, Gabriel's condoms were in his treatments with the guaiac sap and the mercury, that, uh, which was also common, too. Um, that many physicians from all around came all over him. I mean, came all over and took many of Gabriel's relayed thoughts for the use of their own practices. I could only imagine how many physicians used Gabriel's linen condoms on their patients, too. For, like, the rectal exams, you know. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, I got a big finger. Let me check your prostate void. Great, this is turning into one of those fuzzy movies you find on Skinamax. I'm also thinking about how uncomfortable linen condom with a pink little bow on your fucking cock. Think about it. That, that is terrible, Void. Terrible. Think of the rashes. Well, it depends on how soft the linen was. And you know you have to have a wop with that one and not the Italian slur wop. I'm talking about, you know, the acronym. Oh, okay. Like, really? Because that, that linen would soak that stuff up. So she'd have to be really wet for it to even not to burn her. I guess maybe use some olive oil. Is that a... Are you, are you making a reference to Italy? Well, I mean, what other lubes would they use? I don't know. Maybe mercury. Despite what I have just said and what Void just said, we're going back to the topic. Yes. By the age of 39 Earth Revolutions, like everyone in life, Gabriel Fallopio had died. The date given for his expiration was October 9th, 1562 current era, of what some speculate to have been a tuberculosis. But I think it was all a syphilis conspiracy cover-up. Maybe, I don't know. It was the whore in the closet with a thong. I was going to say with the silk condom or with the... Uh, with the linen, linen condom. Con yeah, with the pink bow on it. Yeah, it was said it was supposed to appeal to the women. Oh. Oh, Gabriel's a real ladies pleaser, isn't he? Yes. Anyways, Gabriel Flopian Tube was buried in a church in Padua. Called the St. Anthony Church. Mm -hmm. Rest in a syphilis peace. Yes, did they start handing out condoms at this church? You can look that up. You do that for next week. That would be your, your one job you have to do. I, I already probably know the answer to this. Probably not. Oh, yeah, one job, and you didn't even look it up. Anyways, if you like this episode... Tell your mama. And we're also coming out with our own linen condoms. Void? Yes. No. Okay. Because I know what you're going to do with them. You're going to try them out first. And then they're going to be all gross. And then we're going to have the police come to our door. Then we're going to have to do it all over again. Just like with the pandas. 
Yes. Panda silk condoms coming later. Panda silk condoms? What? Uh, you know they have lambskin. Yeah, anyways, if you like this episode, go ahead and listen to more. There's a whole bunch. Like yes. 78 now. Yes, we've also referenced a lot. So if you have any questions about the other people we mentioned in podcasts, you can look them up and learn more about them. It's a very beautiful, isn't it? The web of, you know, history. Yes. You know, lots of people are connected. Yes. Yes. Anyways, you can uh, follow us or subscribe to us and like us. That would really get us going up. Yes, and thank you for the reviews. Thank you very much for the reviews. I was unaware of how many reviews we actually had because I do not care for people telling me what they think about it, except for if they've already contacted me. Okay. Yeah. So what do we have on the tribe? We're going to have 100 people in the tribe. And they all get the free T-shirt that glows in the dark. Yes. Which is super hella cool. Goddamn right. Did you see that picture? Yes, I saw it. I re- retweeted it. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Anywho's, twit whores, the tick of talk, the tubes of you, mm-hmm. who, the face fuck your mom book. Yeah. In, uh, the Instagram. Uh huh. Yeah, you could do that. Now we have the square hunter. Uh huh. We have the nut gatherer. Uh huh. We have the nut picker. Mm-hmm. We have the nut commander. Uh huh. We have the nut robber. Mm-hmm. And now number six, what is it called, Void? The nut trapper. The nut trapper. I almost was gonna say catcher, but I knew, I realized oh it's trapper. Yeah, I think that fills up the hunting part. Okay. Part. Okay. Yeah, now we need to do like agriculture. No, we need to build. Okay. We don't need any vegetables right now. Okay. We just need to build. So this is going to be wood-related stuff? You don't necessarily have to build with wood. I prefer to build with boxes right now. Okay, boxes. But if I had my choice, it would be rocks. Rocks? Oh, yeah. So like the nut chipper. I mean the uh, rock chipper. Nut chipper. That was a Freudian slip. Yeah, I see. You slipped into some Freud. Exactly. Yeah, here's a scapegoat. We leave in peace. Bye. Bye.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 